Okay, one sec. All right. So I'm here to give a part one on using GitHub for project management in vertical. You know, making these videos, like, I made this video four times already, and it just kept getting messed up every time because I don't know what I'm doing. Um, but I think that's okay because I realize that this slideshow is could be better. <laughs> so I'm just gonna quickly go through this, um, say a few things about GitHub in this part, kind of a conceptual overview uh, and then in the next part, I think it's actually more helpful just to kind of play around on my computer and talk about GitHub while I use it. So you can, you know, follow me along here. Uh, there's a link to this slide presentation for the video. I'll talk about a few of these things quickly. Um, Git is Git is different from GitHub. They're related, but one of them is a version control software and the other one is a website. So what is a version control software? Well, it's something that helps you keep a record of changes to files that you have in a folder. So you basically have, you can go back in time and, and see what your files look like uh, at, at, at previous stages. Um, GitHub is a website where you can have Git, Git repositories be online so other people can download download them. It's free. And you can have uh, public or private repositories. And this could be useful depending on, you know, if you're collaborating with some people, you want to use GitHub tools, which there's lots of great tools there. Uh, you could do that in public or you could do that privately and still use all the tools. That's pretty cool. Uh, here's the website for GitHub. Go there, get a free account. I'm gonna recommend downloading GitHub Desktop. This is the thing that's gonna help you uh, manage your repositories uh, between your local computer and between the cloud up on github.com. It's pretty easy to use, and we'll go into this in the next video. I'll just show lots of examples. Things can get pretty complicated with GitHub and Git. Uh, there's a whole bunch of command line operations you could do. I'm not gonna go into any of that stuff. It'll just be pointing, point and click. Uh, one thing I'll note is when you get GitHub desktop for your computer, go in there and uh, go into preferences, sign into your github.com account, and you'll be ready to go. All right. I'm gonna talk quickly through these things. I wanted to point out some differences between a normal folder on your computer and a Git folder, just as a general idea. So I'm sure you have folders on your computer. Maybe they're on your desktop. Maybe they're in a another folder. I'm gonna put folders and folders. But in a normal folder, um, it's somewhere on your computer and it's got stuff in it, let's say, some files. And in general, some properties of this kind of normal folder are that it's not shared with other people, it's local, that is, it's on your hard drive, and it has no version control. Um, regular file folder. A Git folder is like a regular file folder, except that it has some hidden Git files in it. And, uh, these enable version control. It's still not shared. It's not on github.com. It's local, it's on your hard drive, but it has version control. What does it mean to have version control? Well, effectively, um, whenever you make changes in your files, you can make a choice to save those changes. And every time you do that, um, you'll have a, a kind of a time-stamped version of your files at that time. 
and you can go back through and look at all those different things. That can be pretty useful, actually. If, if you remember like, oh yeah, three months ago, I had something in this one file, uh, but I deleted it. You know, if you'd saved it in your version control history, you could go back and get that thing. Uh, Git folders can get complicated. You can have kind of multiple timelines or different universes in terms of branches. So you could have, let's say, uh, a master branch and maybe a development branch where the files here are kind of related to this one, but they're, um, wait one second. All right, uh, had to pause and leave and came back. Uh, just say that, yeah, of course, you could have these different branches of one folder, which is pretty cool. It's uh, probably better to show an example of that later than continue talking about this now. Uh, basically what's going to be happening uh, in terms of using Git on your computer is you'll just be making changes to the files in your folder like you normally would. And then at some point you're gonna have to choose to make a commit. Uh, uh, involved with that usually is adding a descriptive note and um, and then basically your note along with your changes will get saved and added to uh, the previous versions in your version control history. Uh, finally, in terms of Git and GitHub, uh, what's going on here is you've got a Git folder on your computer and with GitHub you can put a Git folder up on the cloud on github.com. So now you've got two Git folders, one on your computer, one up there, and we've got this problem of syncing them together. Uh, whenever you make local changes, uh, if you want them to be pushed up, sent to github.com, there's a process for doing that. So you can basically rectify that one up there. Um, actually, you can log into github.com and go to a repository and edit files in the cloud. And if you do that, then you'll have a change up here that's not reflected on your local computer and you can bring that back in. Uh, so GitHub desktop is the thing that helps you um, both make commits to your local folders, but also uh, send them up and down from your computer to github.com. And I'll briefly mention here that uh, github.com has some really wonderful features. You can share your stuff uh, online. That's an easy part of it, where if you, if you put your code up there or, or whatever you have in a repo, other people can download it. And there's lots of great collaboration tools. There's good support for websites, so you can actually host websites from github.com pretty easily. And uh, if you're already using R a lot, you may have already downloaded some R packages from GitHub. So it's a way we can actually share R codes. And it supports OSF integration, so the Open Science Framework. If you have uh, a bunch of open data, open materials, stuff like that, or a vertical project, um, you can go ahead and get a DOI, digital object identifier, from the Open Science Framework. And rather than uploading your files through their uh, tools, you can just click your GitHub repository and it'll zip it right in. So that's pretty fast. Okay, so I think that conceptual overview almost is pointless in some sense. I've, maybe it appears complicated. Um, my, and I guess it does, maybe, I don't know. Uh, I thought it was complicated when I started using it. However, the more I, I use GitHub Desktop, the more it's like, oh, this is pretty easy. Just some, um, it's easy to adopt into your normal workflow. And I'll, I guess I'd just say it's similar to Dropbox with, with commit notes. So if you didn't know, Dropbox actually has version control. If you, when you save um, your files that are in a folder, that's a Dropbox folder, um, it's actually saving the history of your changes. And if you go onto Dropbox, you can, you can restore your file uh, back to different times in its history. Okay, so I'm just gonna actually skip over all of these examples and say, that's the first part. I need to go get some lunch 
there's a new place they make bon mis. Um, so I'll be back. I'll try to do the next part later. And uh, there's some OB6 for you. Let's stop this.